and Dr. Nitin Adasul from Sir Gangaram Hospital, New Delhi. The topic of my presentation is Positioning of Cervical Spine Surgery Tips and Tricks. So we'll discuss mainly about the position of the patient and the few points about the ergonomics and the position of the surgeon during the surgery. The flaws in the current system is there is no mention about the position related complication in any of our informed consents. So we'll discuss about the main uh, points and the goals of the positioning. The main goal is to maintain the patient's airway, to maintain the circulation, to prevent the nerve damage, uh, to provide adequate exposure of the operative field, to provide the comfort and the safety, maintain the patient's dignity, stability and the security in the position. The cervical myelopathy and the patients with the high canal compromise, usually the extension causes more harm to the spinal cord. And uh, during the intubation, it is uh, very important not to extend the patient's neck as it causes the pressure on the cord. So this is a small video demonstration of uh, the uh, intubation of the cervical myelopathy patient. Uh, so uh, we usually use the C-MAC so that there is no movement at the neck. There is only movement at the uh, jaw and the video assisted uh, intubation. Uh, so cervical spine surgery includes the prone position and the supine position. There are various tables available at present in the market. The Siemens positioning system, the Andrew frame, Wilson frame. We usually use the Wilson frame, then the Jackson spine table and the longitudinal bolsters. So out of these, uh, the Jackson frame uh, is having the minimum effect on the cardiac function. So the few points about the supine position, the bolster has to be beneath the neck and the interscapular region. The head has to be well stabilized and uh, good padding over the occiput. Uh, we prefer a gel pad below the occiput to release the pressure on the occiput. The neck has to be slightly extended. Tap the chin for the extension and avoid ex excessive extension of the neck and avoid the pressure on the nasal cartilage. The shoulder the longitudinal traction should be there with the surgical tape uh, to see all the levels in the fluoroscopy as shown in the CM picture and avoid the excessive traction. Then the arms uh, should be along the side and tucked, the knee should be flexed and the pillow should be under the knee. So this is the one more modification and these bone uh, foams are, are now available in the market. Uh, so it has the custom made interscapular pillow. Then it also has the support for the knee. It also helps in the traction of the patient during the surgery. So in the supine position, uh, the calcaneum, olecranon, sacrum, thoracic uh, vertebra, scapula and the occiput has to be well padded. In a few uh, conditions like cervical facet uh, dislocations, cervical deformity and cervical corpectomy cases, we need a cervical uh, traction. In a, a prone position, we usually use a smart click. Uh, that is, the you can use the, your mobile phone in the uh, selfie mode and uh, take a picture of the patient during the prone position to make sure that there is no pressure on the eyes, uh, the table head end has to be slightly elevated. So there are various positioners are available like prone foam based, uh, safety faced piece, the horseshoe, head rest and the Mayfield tongs. So out of which the Mayfield tong is the most stable recommended in the cervical disc disease. Uh, in prone position, avoid direct pressure on the eyes, uh, eyes uh, cut out for the eyes, nose and the mouth uh, is important. So this is one of the modification done by the Oxford uh, University. So if the patient is having surgery more than the six hours, they usually uh, do a bactigras uh, dressing before positioning the patient into the prone position. That helps to avoid any pressure sore. Uh, we have slightly modified this Oxford method by using the cotton above the uh, horseshoe. It has helped us a lot in reducing the pressure sore on the chin and the forehead. The neck has to be in the slightly flexed. Check the endotracheal tube frequently and proper padding is important. Our anesthetist, they usually use a torch because uh, if the curtain is on, then it's not possible to check the eyes and the neck position. The shoulder and the upper limbs, pull the upper limbs longitudinally, bolster below the chest and the iliac crest, arm by the side. The abdomen has to be free. Avoid excessive traction on the shoulder, the proper positioning of the arm toward the peripheral nerve palsy and avoid the pressure over the genitalia in the males and the breast in the females. Uh, in the lower extremity, keep the knees flexed. Uh, there has to be a pillow below the ankle and the good padding below the knees and never forget to check the distal pulsations. There are few important uh, 
pressure points in prior uh, prone position like forehead chin elbow genitalia and the knee and also there is uh, anterior pelvic uh, bones uh, so one more important point about Uh, the mayfield head the holder so the most of the standard tables they come with the mayfield head holder which has having the metallic attachment in the front so it is uh, not possible to take ap x ray uh, with this uh, head holder you can take a lateral x ray with this so now we have come across this complication the one screw of a seven seater was medially placed so we have done this modification of three point plaster traction traction what has which has been uh, published so only on the routine horseshoe you can position the patient and the strap uh, the patient and the, you can do the cervical uh, posterior procedures like cervical foraminotomy the laminectomy and the cervical laminoplasty uh, as well as the lateral mass group uh, fixations and seven seater as well and you can check both ap and lateral uh, views and there are few uh, modifications in this and the locally available radiolucent mayfield head holders are also available in the market the one more position is the lateral position which a few surgeons prefer that its uh, table is tilted at 10 to 15 degrees so according to uh, these authors uh, the in uh, lateral position uh, you can you know, the visualization is more better of the contralateral uh, side in the cervical laminoplasty patients in lateral position uh, and when the patient is in sitting position like few surgeons prefer it while doing the cervical uh, laminectomy laminoplasty and the fixation cases so when sitting the surgical uh, field is above the level of the heart which, which can facilitate the air entry into the venous system uh, this then collects in the right atrium causing the ventricular arrhythmias decrease cardiac output and the cardiac arrest so the complications associated with the prone position they are the perioperative visual loss peripheral nerve injuries myocutaneous complications like pressure ulcers and compartment syndrome rare complications like tongue swelling femoral artery ischemia ischemic necrosis of the femoral head hemodynamic complications prone position there is a pressure in the abdomen so the ivc uh, gets compressed the paravertebral and the epidural veins gets engorged and the bleeding in the surgical field is there and uh, sometimes because of the ivc compression there is postural hypot- uh, hypotension decreased cardiac function hypoperfusion and the multiple organ failure the ophthalmic complication of the prone position are the perioperative visual loss and then corneal abrasions and the subconjunctival hemorrhage perioperative visual loss the first reported in 1948 by slocum et al incidence is uh, incidence ranges from the 0.019% to 0.2% the increase risk in the patient with the comorbidities such as the diabetes mellitus and the end organ damage coagulopathy and the neurologic disorders and paralysis ischemic optic neuropathy most common cause of perioperative visual loss 89% of the cases of uh, a perioperative visual loss and uh, this is mainly because of the hypotension blood loss increase in the orbital venous pressure and the central retinal artery occlusion also called as the headrest syndrome and this is the second most common cause uh, and the mechanism mainly the thromboembolism and increasing the intraocular pressure from direct compression of the uh, globe and the third one is the cortical blindness so and there are few rare causes of the uh, visual loss the cortical blindness the result from decrease in the perfusion of the visual cortex in the occipital uh, lobes the most common form of uh, perioperative visual loss after the spinal fusions and uh, spinal deformity surgery the symptoms often uh, improve from the uh, initial ischemic uh, insult without specific treatment but the complete recovery is uh, rare there are few rare causes because of some thromboembolic uh, phenomenon one more complication is the subconjunctival hemorrhage uh, these are the uncommon ophthalmic complications and does not cause visual loss there is impressive appearance may be concerning to the patients but it is usually asymptomatic and resolve without any treatment and there are some neurological uh, complications like spinal cord dysfunction carefully handle the cervical spine during the intubation as i previously mentioned during the patient transfer and uh, while positioning the patient the spinal cord infarction is rare um, but are reported mainly in the patient with the skeletal dysplasia and the chest wall deformities so chest wall uh, deformity should be tackled first or before uh, dealing with any spine surgery then neurological complications like brachial flexopathy more common than the spinal cord dysfunction more prone to injury due to the traction and the compression 
the main causes are the hypoalumia hypothermia diabetes mellitus and alcohol uh, alcoholism the recovery often occurs but not always is complete recovery there are some neurological complications like peripheral nerve injury the most common is ulnar nerve palsy and it is mainly due to the direct pressure over the cubital tunnel or maybe because of the excessive flexion of the elbow or the mal position of the bp cuff uh, so make sure that the bp cuff is away from the elbow and the accidental sudden change in the position of the arm during the surgery and the one more complication is the lateral femoral cutaneous neuropathy its incidence is around 24% um, but it is reversible uh, compartment syndrome is rare anterior thigh and the anterior tibial compartment is mainly reported the diagnosis often delayed and missed the lower pressure in the bony uh, prominence should be maintained in the prone position as well as in the supine and the lateral position necrosis occurs mainly after more than 6 hours of the surgeries and the appropriate uh, padding and the tension of the body bony prominence is critical to avoid the cutaneous complications the massive tongue swelling resulting in the airway obstruction is one of the complication of the prone position the vascular complications including the femoral artery ischemia and the even of the femoral head is reported in few case reports uh, some special considerations in elderly like uh, their skin is usually fragile so you know why applying the tape make sure that uh, the skin is not peeled with the tape their joints are arthritic so pre operatively check uh, that uh, there is a shoulder movement uh, for the prone uh, position then limited uh, range of movement is possible in old age and then paralysis the lifting rather than sliding or uh, dragging avoid the jute taps you can use the bone foam and adequate padding for the bony prominence should be taken care of for a pediatric population the right size of the bed and the attachment is must may necessary to use the safety strap never over extend the limbs or keep in one position for a long time due to small size the children are prone to and has a great risk of physiological compromise appropriate positioning and observation are essential two points about the ergonomics during the sur- surgery so make sure that you are posture is straight and uh, if you are using if you are doing some endoscopic surgery is make sure that the screen is around 3 uh, meters and it is up to the 15 to 45 degrees of the angle and if you are using the microscope make sure that your head is straight and you are not bent the elbow angle should be around 90 to 120 degrees while operating and uh, the operating table like patient position should be at the level of the umbilicus approximately the table height recommended is around 66 to 77 cm and you can use the foot stool to alternately change the leg position during the surgery so the take home message is it's not about the technique it's about the knowledge if you know what causes complication and how to prevent them you will be more likely to keep the patient positioning in mind as something you should routinely monitor thank you